what's going on guys? Alex here with TFL Off-Road and I'm here in Ketchikan, Alaska with a pretty sweet side-by-side -side behind me. That is the Yamaha Wolverine X2 850R spec, which is actually one of the cheapest side-by-sides we've ever tested on TFL Off-Road. Most of the time when we're sent side-by-sides, they're the highest end models, top of the line, fully loaded with all the features. And we normally don't get to test the more affordable base models that you guys always ask to see. And that's exactly what this is. Reason is we're here at one of the destination Yamaha facilities and these are the rental machines they have. So um, great opportunity to get a more base model side by side out on the trail, see how you could actually uh, take an adventure like this with a rental machine just like this one. But yeah, let's get this machine out on the trail, see how it stacks up to some of the really expensive side by sides we've tested in the past. You're gonna wanna hear the price on this one. Here's our machine for the day, bone stock, except for the Ketchikan Adventure sticker on the front and this accessory glass windshield with the wiper, which uh, is a Yamaha accessory you can get through the dealership. Otherwise, completely stock. Let's jump in and get this out on the trail. All right, we're on the move now. Pretty basic side-by-side -side interior. You've got steering wheel with tilt control, so you can lock that in exactly where you want it. You've got manual handbrake and a gated shifter, which I love to see. I hate when they go straight up and down, so you know exactly where you are. I'm in high gear right now. Lighting controls over here, so we've got headlights, low beam and high beam. I'll leave them on low. And then we've got our four-wheel drive selector over here. So we have a two-wheel drive mode. We also have a four-wheel drive mode, which is what I'll probably be in most of the day. You can see that indicated right there. And then there's a diff lock mode as well. I'm probably going a little too fast for that to engage, but you've got a diff lock four-wheel drive mode too. Pretty basic LCD screen up here, but easy to read, nice and bright. Gives you all the info you need, like your speed, your fuel, four-wheel drive mode. And then you've got these two lines at the bottom you can scroll through and get things like temperatures and clock, odometer, trip computer, all that kind of stuff. And you'll also on this screen notice this little turtle icon right here. That's because this has uh, a speed limiter on it right now. So I'm not going to be able to go more than about 25 miles per hour today. That's uh, because of Yamaha's chip controlled throttle. And basically, it's great for uh, rental companies like this. If you're putting kids in the machine, it's great for that too, just to keep everybody safe. Good news is, even with the speed limiter on, I still have access to maximum power. So it's not limiting top end power, it's just limiting the speed. So again, 25 is the top I'll get up to today, but top speed according to Yamaha on this machine if that weren't enabled is about 55 or 60 miles per hour. Also you'll probably notice I've got my wiper going right now. We're getting some rain here in Alaska so it's nice to have that. Um, you got two different speeds to it so that's the slow speed. Here's the high speed. Got some wildlife over here and we do have a little sprayer integrated to this as well which I really don't need to use today because there's going to be water on this windshield the whole time. One of the first things I'm noticing driving this around is the noise levels coming out of it. It still gets decently loud, like if I, if I plant my foot into it, give it the beans, it makes a good amount of noise. But if you're just kind of cruising in the throttle, not pushing it too hard, just kind of moving around from place to place, it's decently quiet. And I could probably have a pretty good conversation in here if there was someone sitting next to me and that would be even more noticeable if I had a full door and cabin closure on here which is available for this machine but that's one of the advantages of having a smaller displacement engine in your side by side is yeah you're not going to get the all out top speed performance you might get in something that's got a bigger thousand cc engine but if you're using your side by side for more work purposes and you usually have a passenger, having something that's not making a whole ton of noise and giving you a headache and having to yell over, that's a big bonus. And the reason I'm saying all that is because this machine has two different engine options right now. For a while it was offered as a 700, then around 2019 they came out with this engine, which is an 847cc parallel twin. That was the Wolverine's only engine for a little while. Until recently, 
the R-Max 1000 came out and Yamaha developed an all new 1000cc engine for that machine and then they started plopping that engine into this Wolverine. So now you can get Yamaha's Wolverine which is positioned as kind of a work play hybrid machine. You can get it in either a two-seater or a four-seater and either with this 847cc engine or the 1000cc engine out of the R-Max. But to jump up to that engine, you're adding quite a bit of cost. So there are plenty of choices in Yamaha's kind of work slash play hybrid side-by-side -side lineup. You've got a ton of different choices in the R-Max. You've got a bunch of different choices in the Wolverine. But this one's basically the cheapest. So yeah, initial impressions are uh, doesn't feel any less of a side-by-side -side than some of the machines I've tested that are double or even triple the cost of this unit. Doesn't seem like a, a super budget machine at all, and that's making me happy. Also, it's worth mentioning, it's staying decently dry in here. Obviously, it's kind of misting inside a little bit, but the way this roof is channeling water down and how it's dripping, it's kind of just dripping down this bar, but not too much of it's coming in the cab. It's staying pretty dry in here. Now there are two different variations of the Wolverine 850. You have the X2, which is the two seat model and the X4 being the four seat model. And there are a little more differences than just the number of seats inside, mainly being the uh, cargo area in the back. So on this Wolverine X2, the two seat model, obviously two seats up front, uh, but you have a dumping cargo bed that can support 600 pounds in the rear. So pull up on this lever and the whole bed will tilt back and you can uh, dump some cargo out. That's the uh, cargo bed there. And then on the four seater, a little bit of a different setup. So the bed is not going to dump in the same way. So if you really need to like load your side by side up with gravel and dump it out onto the ground, the two seat model is probably the one to go with if you're looking at a Wolverine 850. But if you want to throw some more people in and still have some cargo capacity, these seats do slide forward and kind of fold out of the way. Uh, and then that gives you a much bigger cargo area in the back. It just doesn't dump. All right, for tires, you're looking at a Dirt Commander tire, which Yamaha uses on a lot of their side-by-sides. They're 27 inches in height. They're sitting on a 12-inch wheel. And it is a little bit of a staggered setup, at least on the two-seater. So in the front, you get a nine-inch wide tire. And then moving to the rear, a little bit wider with an 11-inch tire. Tires are pretty good, though. These uh, have worked well on other machines for all different kinds of terrain. And same holds true here. Let's talk about style a little bit. I don't think this is a bad-looking machine at all, but might look just a little bit outdated, especially when you put this next to the R-Max. And that's really noticeable in the headlights because you've got sort of this older school round headlight, not much uh, running lights or anything up front, but I do think it's still a good looking machine and you have a pretty aggressive slant to the nose, which uh, definitely an interesting design choice, but that makes it so when you're actually sitting in the machine, you really don't have to look at much hood at all and you have a really good view out of the side by side. So. Uh, practical design and I think a good looking design just doesn't look quite as modern as some of the brand new side-by-sides that have come out in the, the past couple years. Here you can see the load sticker in the back. So maximum cargo capacity is 600 pounds. Total payload is 1160 pounds. So you can load it up with a good amount of gear. And there is a two inch receiver hitch at the rear as well, which uh, you can use to tow 2000 pounds right there. So. Pretty good towing capacity. That's pretty standard for a side-by-side -side, 2,000 pounds. Um, so yeah, you can definitely tow and haul with it. Now looking at the suspension, these are ZF Sachs piggyback reservoir shocks and a decent amount of travel. So you have 8.7 inches of suspension travel up front. You do have some adjustability in the shock there as well. And at the rear, 9.3 inches of travel. And total, you're looking at 11.5 inches of ground clearance and one thing I really like about the design of this machine while we're talking about ground clearance are these nice solid metal rock rails that go along the side of the doors there. A lot of side-by-sides have a plastic tub at the bottom and it scares the crap out of me having to rest that down on a rock. These 
are nice and beefy and I wouldn't have any problems setting the side of this machine down on a big boulder. Now this is the R-Spec, which is essentially the base model of the Wolverine 850, uh, but there is a more premium model, which is the XTR, and that gives you a worn winch up front, which is nice to have for any kind of off-roading. You also get a little bit of an upgraded uh, suspension. You get a rear view mirror on the interior, and some more premium paint and painted exterior bits just to improve the style on the outside. But I think it's pretty cool that we get a chance to look at the R-Spec because it's just really not that often that we get to test drive base model vehicles at TFL Off-Road. Now I know I already mentioned that these are rental vehicles and I wanted to quickly mention this Destination Yamaha official partner sign they have here because I am at Ketchikan Adventure View and uh, this is one of Yamaha's affiliated side-by-side -side rental places. So Yamaha actually works uh, with this company that's here in Alaska to put on some really good side-by-side -side tours. It's not just like a random company that is buying side-by-sides from Yamaha. Yamaha is actually affiliated with them and it's not just here in Alaska. They have um, these destination Yamaha facilities all over the place so you can find one that's near you or near where you're going to be vacationing and uh yeah just check out the landscape here a little different from what we get in colorado but they have tons of machines here they're pretty much all identical uh wolverine x2 850s but yeah just wanted to quickly mention that uh it's part of a big program that yamaha runs called destination yamaha and you can check that out for yourself As always, I'm using Onyx Off-Road to make sure I stay on the right trail here in Alaska. And even though there's barely any cell reception, I'm able to download all my maps for offline use so I can still use them here on the trail. So make sure you check out Onyx Off-Road. You can check all the details, difficulty, check photos before you even make it out to the trail, get directions. It's a great app. Check them out using the link in the description below. Power is pretty good. Cuts out totally once I hit 25, but I mean, this doesn't feel like a baby side by side whatsoever. I think if it weren't raining and the speed limiter weren't enabled, I might be wishing I had a little more power. And that's really only because I'm on a recreation ride right now. I kind of like the speed I'm going at right now because any faster I would be completely soaking wet with the weather we have right now. And look, yeah, I mean, if I were using this as a mostly sport machine and I were taking it out on, you know, trails in Moab all the time and off-road in Colorado and out to the sand dunes, yeah, I'd be wishing I had the 1000cc engine out of the R-Max or I'd be wishing I just had an R-Max in general, but if you're really using your side-by-side -side for work, then this is definitely worth looking at. You get a nimble machine that you can still have fun with on the weekends. Yeah, it's not the most powerful sport machine you can buy, but it's good enough if you need a machine to mostly work for you and then once in a while take the kids out and go have some fun. This is absolutely perfect for that, I think. I mean, I just hear all the time about how expensive these side-by-sides have gotten, especially, you know, look at the Armax or look at the new Polaris XD machines or look at the Kawasaki Ridge. They're so expensive and I'm not saying they're bad machines, but a lot of times people want a side-by-side so that they don't need to load up their fifty, sixty thousand dollar pickup truck full of crap. They can use something much cheaper to, you know, move stuff around, use like a ranch vehicle like we do at Tumbleweed Ranch. And if your main purpose for this kind of machine is doing stuff like that, you really don't need the fancy big screen and the big powerful engine and all the different drive modes. This is more than enough side by side for what we do at Tumbleweed Ranch. And it's still a fun machine to go take you out and explore the wilderness. And I think just the fact that this rental place is using these Wolverine X2 850s 
kind of speaks to how easy they are to drive and easy they are to use. Most of the people coming to this rental place are coming from cruise ships. In fact, they told me that like over a hundred people are coming from cruise ships just today to rent side-by-sides. Most of those people are gonna be pretty inexperienced. So giving them something that's easy to operate, not so easy to get yourself into a huge amount of trouble in, because it doesn't have all that much power. I mean, that's pretty good for rentals. And that means if you buy one of these, it's gonna be equally as good to throw your friends and family in. You're not gonna be worried about them hurting themselves or the machine. So yeah, overall, I think this is a pretty fantastic side-by-side -side, and probably one that's pretty overlooked. I'm glad I got the chance to come take one of these rental units out because like I said at the start of the video, every time we get a side-by-side, -side, it's fully loaded. It's the top of the line, highest spec model with, you know, all the crazy sound systems and speakers and full cab enclosures. It's not too often we get to test out a base model like this. And I really don't know why. This is a great machine, especially for the price. Pricing on this Wolverine X2 850R spec starts at $15,799, which I think is a pretty impressive price. Maybe I'm just too used to seeing $30,000, $50,000 side-by-sides over the past few years. But I really do think that this is a good value and a side-by-side -side that a lot of people should look at. Um, if you are looking at an R-Max, this is $7,200 cheaper than the cheapest R-Max, and the R-Max goes way up from there depending on what options you go with. And this had plenty of power. Um, yeah, if I were like out running in the sand dunes or really going for high speed runs, I probably would wish I have the 1000cc, the bigger engine, uh, but for you know, what we do at Tumbleweed Ranch, which is moving stuff around, recovering vehicles, you know, using it as a filming vehicle, this would be absolutely perfect and it would save a lot of money by not going with one of those crazy nicer side-by-sides that's a lot fancier. So I think these don't get as much love as they should. Um, this is my first opportunity to get in one of these pretty base model side-by-sides because the manufacturers love sending us the expensive ones. So uh, I think the manufacturers should send us more of these because uh, I think they need more love. This is what people should really be buying. It's hard to justify you know, a $50,000 side-by-side when you can buy a mid-size pickup truck for the same price, but you can't buy a brand new mid-size pickup truck for under $16,000 and you can with this, it'll tow 2,000 pounds, it'll haul 600 pounds, it's got pretty good payload, it's still plenty fun, and uh, there's so much you can do with it if you're actually using one of these for work. Thanks for watching, don't forget to check out alttfl.com so you don't miss anything. Catch you in the next video.